Hello everyone, I'm Trevor Camaro. And I'm Gavin Ferrer, and this is Fred TV News. Today's show is all about the spookiest time of the year, Halloween. With summer gone and autumn upon us, let's take a look at some great stories about celebrating this spooky season. When we think about Halloween, we think about trick-or-treating, costumes, and candy, especially candy. Did you know that the Battleship has a great event every year called the Battleship Boo Bash? It's trick-or-treating, but on the Battleship, and it's local. Check this out. An event for the whole family. Participate in trick-or-treating, meet friendly costume characters and more. Battleship Boo Bash is a fun learning experience for the whole family. Visitors get to trick-or-treat, meet friendly costume characters, and so much more. Uh, so Boo Bash has actually been going on um, for the last couple of years. Each year we try to progress either you know, adding more candy stops or this year it's actually our first time adding a little bit of an optional scary section to our third deck. Um, and there's like a few people hidden behind the exhibit spaces, um, jumping out a little bit, but uh, we're really trying to emphasize a safe um, you know, place for kids in the surrounding community, but also the surrounding like New England area, a place for them to trick or treat. It's so much fun to dress up for Halloween, especially when you have to go to an event. But sometimes it's tough to decide what to be. Do you go with something that is store bought or do you make it yourself? Here's Angelica with her story. Halloween approaches a fierce costume showdown bruised between brand name extravagance and the allure of DIY creativity. Will the convenience of ready made costume outshine the charm of handmade assembles this spooky season? The art of dressing up for Halloween comes from the ancient Celtic traditions and people believe dressing up as spirits would ward off actual ghosts. Over the centuries, this spooky practice evolved into the vibrant, candy-filled costume extravaganza we know and love today. DIY costumes unleash your creativity, allowing you to craft unique, personalized ensembles that stand out in any crowd. However, they can be time-consuming and require various materials that aren't readily available. And if you're not the crafty type, well, then your costume can turn into a Halloween nightmare. Adam Sandler, what are you doing here? Waiting on for the play Kingdom style. <laughs> well, folks, you see my costume tonight, but now I'm dying to know what will you all wear this Halloween? Don't be afraid. You know what? I'm still thinking about candy. And Ryan recently visited a trunk or treat here at Thurfee. It was a well-attended event and definitely something I'll have to put on my list for next year. Are you a sugar head? So what's better of going door to door when you could go trunk or trunk? Trunk or treat is something that happens at Durfee High School on Ray Street. It's been an annual thing and it was a huge success. The trunk or treat event of Fall River is definitely a favorite. It's a safe and fun environment where kids and teens can come in one place and experience the spirit of Halloween. What is the goal of putting this, like, this whole thing together? Um, so this is an entirely free event for the community. Um, it's a gathering where people can come and enjoy some activities for free for their family and a free movie at the end of it. One reason is because it's one-stop shopping and also because parents feel safer knowing that their children are in one location and less likely to receive candy from complete strangers. Uh, what was the goal of putting Trunk or Treat together? So the goal of the drive-in series is to be a free community event. It's put on by Senator Michael Rodericks, the office of Mayor Paul Coogan, and Greater Fall River Recreation. This year in particular, we have um, Tufts Health Plan sponsoring the photo booth, and it's a great way for people to enjoy the old-time drive-in movies. Um, this year, we're doing Hotel Transylvania, so we uh, partnered with the Fall River Public Schools to combine it with the Halloween trunk or treat so that people can come out and look at the trunks, um, um, go trick-or-treating and watch Hotel Transylvania. We also have the alpacas here and other activities. All right, so how are you guys liking this so far? Is it fun, amazing, or horrible? What do you guys think? It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. Why is it fun? Because you gotta do, you gotta do like cool things. Like you gotta feed the alpacas and stuff. Get a lot of candy and all that. How about you? Why is it so fun? Um, cause you get to like feed the alpacas. 
How are you liking this trunk or treat? Are you having fun? I'm having so much fun. Why are you having so much fun? Because I'm getting a lot of candy. Getting a lot of candy? So there was it. Trunk or treat, an awesome event, takes place every year. So now it's my turn to get some candy. That event looks like a lot of fun. You know, Gavin, you'll like this next one. Do you know what else is fun? Making some spooky treats and freaky foods. Here's Abby to teach you how. Undecided on what to bring to your next Halloween party? Well, here's some spooky treats and freaky foods for you. A favorite of this time of year is mummy hot dogs. This freaky food is a tasty finger food that your party ghouls will love. Let's begin. First, you will need your ingredients in your kitchenware. The 350 while you're prepping your food. First, let's spray your pan. Take your hot dog and roll it in your crescent roll. Now that your cookie sheet is full, you need to place them in the oven for 12 to 15 minutes, depending on your oven. Now that the mummy hot dogs are done, take them out of the oven and let them cool for just a little bit. Let your hot dog have cooled. Let's make some eyeballs. So first you're going to use your toothpick and make some holes in the hot dog. Then you're going to use your mustard. Then your ketchup. And your ketchup you can even put on the tray and use with your toothpick. And there's your mummy hot dog. Here's your mummy hot dog. Let's make a spooky treat to go along with it. All right, let's get your ingredients. Set your oven to 350 while you're making your cookie dough. Add your mixture in first. Once you added your mixture, make sure you crack one egg. And then add one half cup of butter. Then mix. Once your dough is made, start to make fun shapes out of them and place them on your cookie sheet. Now that your cookie sheet's full, you need to place them in the oven for 8 to 12 minutes. That's it for today, folks. I hope this helped you for your next Halloween party. I'm Abby Amida, and thank you for watching. See you next time. Speaking of making things, I heard that there's a creepy craft fair at the Lafayette Durfee House. This looks like a great place. Do you love crafts? Do you love Halloween? Well, I'm here at the creepy craft fair at the Lafayette Durfee House. Come on. The Lafayette Durfee House, located at 64 Cherry Street in Fall River, is a well-known historical landmark built in 1750.
This home was once owned by Cole Joseph Durfee, who led the Farrer militia during the War for Independence and was often visited by the Marquise de Lafayette during these times, hence the name Lafayette Durfee House. Currently, this is the only restored historical home in Fall River, where every room has been created to bring us back in time to 1750. In addition to the historical value that this house has to offer, the Lafayette Durfee House is home to so many special events, such as the Creepy Craft Fair, which is my favorite. We decided to have a craft fair again this year because we want to open the house up to different venues. Uh, to get more of the public down here who might not be interested in historical uh, stories and historical life of colonial life of the uh, Durfee family. So we want to en encourage people to come down, different groups of people, and that's why we had the craft share, fair this year. All vendors are local and sell a variety of items including candles, jewelry, paintings, handmade clothing, flower arrangements, and of course there are creepy pumpkins for sale. So I understand you're only eight years old and you created all these tumblers and mugs behind me. How'd you do that? I wrapped it up and I put in the heat press with my gloves, then I push it down and then I open it and take it out. So tell me about some of the pieces you're showcasing today. So today, I mean, normally I have earrings and I do magnets, but because it's a creepy craft fair, I'm focusing a lot on my Halloween earrings because I think people come here knowing that it's a creepy craft fair and that we do have a lot of Halloween and fall themed items. So these are the, um, the different kind of earrings that I've done for Halloween. The Lafayette Derby House hosts many special events throughout the year, including tea with Martha Washington, colonial craft fairs, hearth cooking events, holiday events, and many more. And if you just want to stop by and take a tour, you can do that too. Check out their website for more information at www.lafayetteduffyhouse.org. If you're an artist or you like crafts or you just want a unique experience, come by the Lafayette Durfee House for more events. I'm Laisha for Fred TV. That place looks amazing, even if you want to just take a tour. But it's really cool that they also host other more creative events too. For people who aren't history buffs, just about everyone loves arts and crafts. Check out our next story about the Fall Driftwood Arts and Crafts Workshop held at Viva Maker Shop on South Main Street. Design is a local place where artists, artisans, and creative people create unique and one-of-a-kind gift items and then sell them. Hang On Design started when my husband and I moved out east and I was hanging out at the beach a lot. I'm from the Midwest and we don't have a lot of sandy beaches. Uh, I started noticing a lot of really cool driftwood and it kind of sparked something inside. I went home with that, uh, made a trip to Joanne Fabrics, came back home and started decorating my house with driftwood wall hangings. Um, from there, I started doing an Etsy shop, which led me to doing local events and um, coming to the Viva Maker Shop in Fall River. At the recent Hang On Design event, it was all about the season of fall. Artists use their craft to construct rare gifts. Could you tell me a little bit about the Viva Maker Shop? Yes, we have been here on South Main Street for about a year. We are a collection of currently 68 different artists and makers from Fall River and the surrounding communities. Um, various different um, uh, crafts and arts, um, everything from glass to jewelry to soap um, and even more. Items here make great ideas for the holidays and any time of the year. Recently we had a workshop where we made a garden with succulents and little animals and people in it here at the Viva shop. So this is my stuff here. My husband is a lapidarius. That's a person who cuts and polishes stones and these are stones that he has cut and polished from rocks.
Another creative workshop that you may not know exists in our area is the resin workshop by Wooden Roses on North Main Street. Here, one can create an array of items, including vases with preserved flowers, custom stamped flowers, memorial pet paw prints, and of course, resin crafts. Here's Hayden with that story. Most of us think that Halloween is mainly only trick-or-treating, wearing costumes, going door to door, but it's not all just that. I found something so cool that it's, I thought this was a whole different holiday. It's a resin workshop, come see what it's like. Wooden Roses is a company that focuses on artistic freedom and coming together as a community. Their company originally was mainly focused on stamping designs or placing inspirational sayings on live or fake roses. But recently, they added a little extra something to the mix. Their Halloween and fall inspired event recently was a huge success, where guests chose to make a pumpkin jar or a large skull. Uh, we officially started full time in April of this year. Um, we started last year, we became a franchisee of a company called Speaking Roses. So we can create custom stamps to then print on live or fake roses. Um, so we started with that and then Wooden Roses was born from there and the resin pieces came when we started making vases to go along with our roses. And my husband, the woodworker. What do you make? Furniture, uh, custom furniture, custom cabinets. Um, like the cabinets that you see or the shelves that you see later is like designed and built by me. Most resin workshops charge a higher price for creating these crafts, ranging from about $200 to $400 for the type of resin that is used. However, at Wooden Roses, the cost is much more affordable, typically around $25 to $45, with the most common being $25. The guests would be able to add colors, chains, stones, feathers, and more add-ins to customize their art. The studio fee is per person, and the guest decides how much they would like to spend based on which molds they choose to create. They have mold options starting from $1 ranging up to $275. I think I enjoyed stretching my creativity. I thought it was going to be really hot and scary. And Cory Lynn and Chris walked us through it, sat with us, made it easy. I liked the friendships that we had together. Um, I think it's a good family event or a good friend event and there's so many interesting things that you can do that you might not have even thought of before. Actually I feel the same as Diane. I have no artistic talent <laughs> but uh, um, Chris sat with me and helped me make the items that, I, that I'm going to event eventually bring home and uh, their work is beautiful and they claim that we can all do it and they really helped us do it tonight. So whether you have a lot of artistic ability or none at all, this is a great uh, opportunity for people to get together and see what they can do because it was a lot of fun. This would be great for families and parties. I can't wait to come back. I'm actually coming back already. I, Me I too. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually really cool. Oh, oh, I didn't realize we were filming yet. Uh, as you can see, this place is really fun and it has a lot of cool things that you wouldn't normally expect of any place. Well, that's it for today. See you next time. Gavin, what is one of your favorite traditional activities to do this time of the year? I'm going to have to say pumpkin carving, honestly. Well, then you're in luck. There are times where you have that carving feeling. Sometimes you can't control it. Pumpkins are the only solution. Let's check out more about pumpkin carving, shall we? The tradition of pumpkin carvings began in, believe it or not, the early 1660s and evolved over the years as it became a well-designed form of art. With this in mind, multiple individuals who carve pumpkins may strengthen their observation, communication, and investigation skills. Not to mention that pumpkin carving is also a form of art. Well, actually, what interested me in pumpkin carving is I've just always loved the spooky season, and getting to like carve pumpkins has just always been a favorite of mine with my family, and I love everything arts and crafts, so it's kind of like a favorite. If you're not sure what to do with the leftovers, there are plenty of things to make. So don't throw the inside of a pumpkin away. Well, that's all we have for today. Maybe we try carving a pumpkin this year. You might find that creative soul within you. I'm Sam, and I'm signing off. See you next time.
pumpkin carving is very entertaining, and so are movies, and so am I. <laughs> that was a joke, because this next story is mine. Check out my story on a horror film that will spook your boots. Have you ever watched a movie so scary you couldn't sleep at night? Let's talk about one that scared me, Hereditary. This movie was released in 2018 and is one of the scariest movies of all time. The main cast consists of Millie Shapiro, Alex Wolf, Tony Collette, and Gabriel Bryan. The movie was directed by Ari Aster and produced by Kevin Frakes, Lars Knudsen, and Buddy Patrick, and with the help from the production companies A24 Palm Star Media, Finch Entertainment, and Wendy Hill Pictures, they got a box office of $82.8 million. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the movie as much as I did, and I'll see you on the next one. Later, guys. Well, that's all for our newscast today. I'm Trevor Kamara. And I'm Gavin Pereira from Fred TV News. Don't forget to catch us on Channel 9 and Fall River, and also on Facebook and YouTube. Until next time, thanks for watching, and have an amazing fall. I'm Gavin Ferrer, and this is Fred TV News. Today's show is all about, wait, that jolt. <laughs> that, that jolt started making me laugh.